Thank you, Julia, and uh, we are listening to to you. Okay, thank you, David. Can you see my screen? Yes, perfectly. Okay, do I move you away like that? Huh? Yeah. Okay, well, uh, thank you, uh, thank you, David. So you already uh, heard a bit about me um, uh, just just a while ago. Um, I'm a biologist, so I won't be talking about any um, um, uh, cameras or, or, or whatsoever. David asked me to kind of introduce the, the, the biology behind uh, um, the collaboration that we, we, we have, and it will be one of the case studies that will be presented, I think, tomorrow afternoon uh, um, by, his, uh, by his team. So it, the title is Time Skills in Seedling Development. And um, uh, what we are interested in in our group is to understand, let me see if I can move it up, is to understand um, what are the genes and the mechanisms that are underlying a uh, vigorous establishment of seeds. And, um, well, I don't have to convince you that seeding establishment is kind of a vital parameter when you want to ensure a high yield, because of course, if you don't have any seeds or plants established, you won't have any, uh, any seeds uh, for food. So that's what we refer to as stand establishment, meaning the percentage of immersed individuals. But it's not only about the number of plants that emerge, it's also about speed. And, and fast emergence, so we are really interested in, in, in the mechanisms behind fast emergence. One way to, to be able to establish the seedling, so to have a root growing and being able to take up water from the soil, to have your leaves being developed, so in order to capture the energy in terms of photosynthesis for the plants, uh, and, and to do this before different biotic or abiotic factors change, like for instance, it's not raining anymore. And the second reason why more and more we realize there is an importance to look at fast emergence is to avoid competition with weeds. And this is, of course, in relation to the, the reduction of uh, herbicides, uh, all the different uh, regulations that are changing at the moment that are quite important. Okay, so that's fast emergence, and then the other reason why we work on this is because we want to have homogeneous emergence. In other words, we want all the seedlings to rise at the same time in order to have plants of the same size, and this is important in terms of medical harvesting. And what you can see in the picture at the right, at the left, uh, in A you have kind of a homo homogeneous establishment, and in B you see, uh, well, there, there are some plants missing, but also some plants are small and some, some plants are bigger. So, if we look, think about seedling establishment, um, it's not a one and all thing. Of course, at the end, what you want is to have your plants appearing above the soil, but in fact, there are different steps that are going on. I'm just going to go a little bit into the biology and into the termology. Um, oh, sorry, with you. Oh, sorry for this. Yes, I want to have my pointer. Okay. So first of all, the first thing that's happening here is in the soil is germination. So you have a dry seed, it's taking up water. And at a certain point, there is a protrusion of the radical through the seed coat layers. And this is what we refer to as germination. This is really a, a binary event. Either a seed has germinated or it hasn't. So this is the first event. Well, of course, with cameras, we're not going to be able to see this unless we do it in Petri dishes. Then what goes on in the soil is the part that we refer to as heterotrophic growth. And this is where the seedling is developing, the radical is growing downwards, and you see here a small bit here actually moving up like that from the soil. Now the bit of the autonomy, you have your cotyledons, which are, if you look at dicotyledons, two parts that, are, that contain all the reserves of the seed to be able to grow while it can't yet get any energy from the sun, and you have your radical. The radical is referred to as root, the moment the plant is completely established. And so what you can see, you have this hypocotyl actually going and then piercing through the, 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 the crust of the soil. And this is where this second event that is occurring, and that is where the light is being perceived by, by, by the hypocotyl to say, okay, now you can actually take your cotyledons out of the soil, unfold them, and become a plant. So this is the first event that we can see actually visually with the camera, and that is a very important event. And then the third phase that we have is autotrophic growth. So this is where the cotyledons unfold. They start to capture the, the energy of the sun. And then after the cotyledons uh, are unfold, you'll have the primordia developing. You have your first leaves appearing. Now, what you should know is that these first leaves, the appearance of these first leaves is very important because the photosynthesis in these first leaves is like tenfold higher than it's in the cotyledons. So in order for the seed to have vigorous growth, it's very important to have these, these leaves appear quite rapidly. 
Okay, uh, so I refer to heretical, hypercotal, and cotyledon. Um, let's first consider just the emergence. And um, if you think of a seed lot, so, so a, a, a bunch of seeds together and you sow them, you realize that not all seeds emerge at the same time. And that's what you see here in these three images. This is uh, soybean seedlings that we have sown. And there's three different pictures taken over different time, uh, time frame. Here you see, uh, if I remember well, 10 seedlings that have emerged. And here there are 14. So what you need to do is to um, take into account the time, and it's not only the number of seedlings that have emerged, but what we are interested in is the time at which a seedling emerges. So you need to perform a time to event data analysis, and this is really what we worked on a lot with, um, uh, with the group Imorfen. The, um, um, the way to describe the percentage germinated in a petri dish or emerged seedlings is via um, um, a cumulative uh, distribution function that you can see here. It can be described by Gompertz or by Hill. It's, uh, it's the opposite of a survival curve. So it's a typical time to event curve. And what you can see here is the distribution of the emergence of the seedlings uh, as a unit of time. And as you can see, if the emergence is later, of course, your distribution will be shift to a longer time frame. And what we also see and what we're very much interested in in relation to this homogeneity of the, of the seed lot is if um, uh, that, that seeds, a seed lot might start emerging at the same time as when it emerges rapidly, but over time, seedlings take a long time, the total seedlings take a long time to emerge, and they have a very broad distribution that you can see here in C. Okay, so this is actually quite simple. Uh, what you want to count is, is the time until the seedlings emerge, and this uh, will be explained later. But we are interested in what happens afterwards. So this is a small uh, film that you see of alpha-alpha seeds that we have sown. And but after emerges, what you can see is the two cotyledons appearing. And then you see the other leaves uh, uh, appearing. So this is a picture uh, where I cut out the eight hours of light. So that's why from time to time you see switches. And what you can see as well is that the, um, uh, the cotyledons are closing slowly. That is between one or two hours before the light goes off. The cotyledons are closing a bit and then they're opening again. So if you count the percentage of emerged seeds, you can see at a certain point here, they have all emerged. There's no change anymore. But of course, uh, after that, the green pixel area will still increase because you still have uh, growth. So this is a very rough way of measuring uh, seedling establishment. So what we wanted to do is to see if we can transform what appears from the moment you have emergence, what appears into an event. And that's what we did here. We realized that um, it would be a good idea to see if we can measure, and this is via machine learning, I won't go into details, it is what will be explained later on. But what we wanted to do is to measure the event of the emergence, so the hypocotyl coming out of the soil. Then as a second event, the moment that the two cotyledons are completely open, which will be the point where they can have the maximal um, uh, photosynthesis going on, the point where you have your first primordia of your first leaf forming, if you look here at the seedling in the middle, you first see the two cotyledons opening, and at a certain point you see a small primordia appearing. There it is. They will go grow into the first leaf, and we do the same thing with the second primordia. So what we are interested in is to do this analysis of the dynamics of the individual seedling emergence, uh, and to really do this, um, so we really to do individually for each seedling will have these measurements. And this gives us a very detailed time to event analysis of post-emergent growth. And um, this is the, uh, the, the, the just one result that I will show that came out of this analysis that we developed with the Imorfan team. As you can see, we are able for all the seeds that have been sown, the time from the moment they come out of the soil, that they appear and that they have the opening of the cotyledons and the appearance of the first and the second leaves. So if you want to go into the, the, um, uh, the molecular understanding of, of what is related to the seedling establishment, it's really important to be able to dissect it like that in different, uh, in different phases, because the genes that are involved 
in, in the appearance of the hypocotyl above the soil or that is are involved in the first leaf appearing, of course, won't be the same thing. So what we do is to use genetic diversity and this phenotyping uh, of these events uh, to, to, to understand um, what genes are underlying. And this is a, a program we've been working on uh, in, in the framework of a European project, which is called UCLEG, where the point was to look at five uh, different legume crops, uh, pea, bean, uh, no, sorry, bean, pea, soybean, uh, alpha, alpha, um, red clover, and uh, faba bean. And to try to characterize genetic diversity to understand uh, the role of certain genes from our part in this uh, in this uh, seedling establishment. So here are just two pictures to show you what you can actually expect in terms of genetic diversity. This is P, uh, one accession here on the left and another accession on the right. In fact, in terms of emergence, they were quite similar, but the post-emergent growth was completely different. So this is a very nice genetic variation that we can have. And of course, we have all the, um, um, the, the genomic data uh, in order to be able to do uh, association genetics and, and get down to the, to the gene regions. Here on the right, no, yes, on the right, you see a red clover emergence, two accessions again. And this is very clear here. This is a very instantaneous picture, of course, after 10 days. You see here a seed lot where everything has emerged actually quite homogeneously with the first leaf having appeared almost everywhere. And here a seed lot at the bottom in which and seedlings are missing. But also you see a lot of um, uh, difference in seedlings being very big or seedling actually just having emerged and being very, very small. So, of course, this gives us a number of individuals with a certain event completed. And this really gives you an idea of the quality of the seed, uh, of the, of the, of the seed lots, because we know not all seedlings that emerge actually will go and develop a first leaf. So it's important to look at the different events. It will give us the time to a certain event happening. And how this time is, is different or, or um, uh, is varying within a seed lot. Either everything happens for all the seedlings at the same time, or it's very spread out. It also gives you, and this is really, really very interesting, the time between the events. Um, and, and it will give you an idea of the spread of the events. And for instance, one of the things that we have uh, identified is that the genetic variation between different seed lots of uh, red clover is the biggest for the time between the moment that the cotyledons are open and the first leaf is appearing. So we think in terms of breeding, there might be something that we should focus on in the future. So this is all ongoing work, so um, I, I won't be able to show you any, any publication of it. But it really shows you the strength of using phenotyping uh, in, in a time-lapse way to, 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 to be able to capture very specific events. Just one small word on, on, on biological anomal anomalies, abnormalities, sorry. Um, this is something, of course, with a camera, you don't realize why something is not being detected, but I think you have to be aware, and uh, um, this is why it's important to, to kind of work with biologists, that there might be weird things happening. For instance, seeds with three cotyledons instead of with two. Seeds that stop, uh, that actually have the cotyledons broken, so you just see the hypocotyl coming out, you don't see any else. Uh, seedlings with only one of the two cotyledons, etc. Et and then if you study genetic diversity, what will be very important is to take into account that not all seeds or seedlings will be of the same size. And so this is the advantage of looking at events, the size is less important. Just one last slide to make you aware that what I talked about to you uh, is um, this case where you talk about emergence of First the hypocotyl and then the cotyledons from the soil, and after that the formation of the first leaves. And these are dicotyledonous seeds. And we talk about hypogenal germination because there are other cases, like for instance P, where the cotyledons stay in the soil. You have your epicotyl coming out of the soil, and actually then you have leaf development. And then in terms of monocotyledons, it's even another situation. So it's just to make you aware that. The story is, is only true when you talk about these type of seeds here. So as a take home message, um, germination, seedling emergence analysis are time to invent analysis, uh, analysis. The different events that characterize seedling establishment uh, besides germination and emergence, you can go further in, in, in designing events uh, like cotyledon opening or first leaf appearance. 
You have to realize when you talk about seeds, you're talking about a population. So you have to look at individuals and then take into account the, the modeling of the individual uh, towards a population. Heterogeneity is very important to study, but you have to make sure it is biological and not experimental. And I think we spent about two years to set up a system uh, to avoid to have experimental problems in relation to watering, light, etc. Uh, so be aware of the different types of seedlings. I've just uh, shown you that. And what you have to keep in mind when you do all these data analysis is, is the changes you can have when you look at genetic diversity uh, in, in, and or, or, or also the biological uh, artifacts. Okay, that was it. I just want to acknowledge the people that are uh, that have been involved in this uh, study. So of, of the C team uh, that, that I'm, I'm working in, uh, Joseph uh, Livu, uh, who run most of the experiments, did all the logistics behind it together with Julie Marzin. Uh, both are uh, technicians, Benoit Livu as well, David Lalanne and, and Olivier Le Prince, who's the head of the, the team. And then the Emo friend team, uh, mainly David uh, Pageman and Salma, who really um, helped worked a lot with, with making this all possible. And the finances uh, came from um, a European project, uh, H2020 project, and from the region and from INRE. And with that, I thank you uh, for your attention and any questions are welcome. Thank you.